What up, this Marcus Dynasty Bull Dads. We have the Dynasty advice going into the playoffs. You're going into the trade deadline here. Playoffs are a few weeks away. It's about a month away. So what are some things you can do now to help prepare yourself for victory? Some of the stuff might even translate into redraft here uh, as well. And so the first thing I want you to, to understand, and it is very, very difficult to understand, and I, I have trouble with this first point immensely, it is you do not have to win every trade. You want to. I get it. You want to win every single trade. And honestly, sometimes you have to lose trades. And you have to sacrifice for the future for now. There are very small opportunities to... A small window sometimes to win a championship. And, and I've done this before where I have sacrificed my future. My have sacrificed... If it's 2020, I've sacrificed 2021, 2022 for 2020 at that point to get that championship. You don't have to win every single trade. And then sometimes you have to lose a trade to, to, to go after that championship. If you are a top two, top three team, this is your time to go after it. You may have to sacrifice the, the, the first of your next couple of years. You may have to sacrifice a younger player that could be even potentially hurt to, to go for that championship run. And so I have done this in the past. I'm going to continue to do this. There are some teams that I am a top two, top three team, and I'm going to potentially sacrifice the future. I even have a couple of leagues where I have Devin Achan, and it's like, well, is he going to come back? Is he not? If he ends up being hurt for a longer period of time, I might need a running back for now. And so these are some of the predicaments that you might have to get into. And so don't feel like you have to win every single trade. The goal is to win a championship, which leads us into point number two. And the point number two is be be after some of these veterans some of these veterans honestly are are not very uh, not very appealing to have adam thielen raheem mostert um deandre hopkins some of these players are they just look meh like not meh as in like they, they, their long-term value look looks very poor but what they can do is they can potentially win you that championship uh, last year i traded for keenan allen in a league a couple other, I've, I've traded for veterans uh, a lot to help get me there. A second round pick can be extremely valuable. It can get you a Michael Pittman. It can get you a Tajay Spears. It can get you a lot of different players. Uh, and I say Tajay Spears. It can get you a Tank Dell. It can get you that prospect. But know what it can also do? It can get you that veteran that can get you the next 12 months or even next few weeks of production that can help propel you into this championship mode. And when do you when do you buy these veterans? When you're a top three team. When you're a top three team, a lot of times you have six teams uh, that go to playoffs. And if you're in that top two, you're probably going having a buy uh, for mo majority. This is a majority of leagues. And so if I'm a top two spot, I am trying to secure that top two spot. If I'm a number three team, I'm again trying to push and get into one of those bye weeks uh, or, or be one of those contenders that, that tries to find that weakness. And so maybe it's Raheem Mostert. Maybe it's Alvin Kamara. Maybe it is Joe Mixon, who I actually just traded for and overpaid for because I need an RB2. And my RB1 and my RB2 was my, my RB2 being Alexander Madison is kind of weak. This is before the Cam Akers injury. And I'm like, that is my only weak spot is my RB2. My RB1 is, is awesome. My RB2 spot weak. Now Alexander Madison being my RB3 feels kind of strong. And, and now Joe Mixon being my RB2 feels really good. And now I feel like my roster can withstand a little bit of issues because I'm, I'm great at quarterback, great at wide receiver, great at tight end, a top three team, probably top two team in every single one of those positions. Like, to, like tight end, you have Andrews and Kincaid. It's like, that's, that's great for Dynasty. So be, off, or be, be, be attacking some of these veterans. And for a selling team, for a selling team, this is almost like the opposite. You want to be able to sell these veterans. Get those second round picks. Don't hold them. Don't wait too long. And so point number three is play the injury game. And what is, the, what is the injury game? The injury game is be careful because I've seen teams wait too long and wait for too big of a haul and all of a sudden their player gets hurt. And all of a sudden, that let's say Adam Thielen gets hurt on Thursday night. That's tonight. Um, that, that, that value, that second round pick that you could have got now becomes almost nothing. If you're a Dallas Goddard, somebody who was trying to trade Dallas Goddard and they were asking for way too much, 
Now they can't sell Dallas Goddard for a little while. He broke his forearm. D Darren Waller, same thing, was trying to sell him. Now he can't sell him. And so a lot of teams can get into this injury game, but also attack the injuries if you're a rebuild. If you're a rebuild, find those teams that lost Dallas Goddard, that lost Darren Waller. And if you have a tight end, be able to attack those teams. Say, hey, I see that you're a top two, top three team. You just lost your tight end. I have George Kittle. I have Cole Komet. I have a tight end that can help get you through these next few weeks of this month to help keep your team going along. So it's playing the injury game. There's a couple of ways to play it, but be careful that you wait. You don't want to wait too long, but also attack those teams that have injuries. There's a team that is notorious for this. Like a player goes down and as soon as they are listed as out, you get, there's a, in one league, I get an offer. If I have a player that is hurt, it doesn't matter if it's week one, week three, week 10. If, and so they almost overdo this, but they are sending offers to every team they possibly can that needs that position or that gets that injury. I mean, I had J.K. Dobbins injury and that Gus Edwards trade was in my inbox within like five seconds. They, when they said Achilles, boom, five seconds later, Gus Edwards trade on my doorstep, which is kind of nice. I don't have to go after it, but a lot of times it's, it's going to be a premium that you're paying with that type of response time. Um, so again, these are some of the biggest things that you can do now. The next couple things is you start looking at the playoff schedule. Start looking, peeking at some of those weeks and start seeing, okay, because we got enough data to figure out what teams are good against quarterbacks? What teams are bad against quarterbacks? Are good against running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, etc. Start looking at some of those rosters and saying, okay, do I have, if I'm a top two team, this is so important. And this is sometimes what has gotten me in this like three point victory or two point victory because I chose a player that I traded a player six weeks in advance because I saw that their playoff schedule was great. And they ended up scoring three more points, five more points than the running back that I had because I flipped them or switched them or added just a little, I traded this player plus a third to get this player. And that third round pick ended up giving me a couple more points that allowed me to go another week into the playoffs that allowed me to either be in the championship or win a championship. It is so important to start looking at playoff schedule, start seeing what teams start seeing, okay, what is, what are the trends? What players could I potentially get? And, and, and start going after those rebuilding teams say, Hey, I have a player that's 26. I want the player that's 27. I'm just a little bit older, but that player has a little bit better playoff schedule. They don't want to win. A lot of rebuilding teams, they don't want to win. They, they, and, and so they want to be able to get a little bit younger. I've been on the rebuilding side. Uh, it, it's not as fluent for me as, as, as being a contender because I kind of like to try to rebuild, reload as I go through. Um, which I've talked about that strategy before. Uh, it doesn't always work. Sometimes you end up burning yourself in the butt. Uh, but sometimes if, if a player, let's say, says, hey, I have, uh, let's say I have Derrick Henry. And somebody comes to me and says, I have Joe Mixon. And maybe Dave, Joe Mixon might not even be the perfect example. Uh, it, it's, it, it'll, be, it'll work. Uh, Joe Mixon, Alvin Kamara, and I have Derrick Henry. It's like, well, Derrick Henry is older. Maybe I can switch. So then I can get a younger player. Maybe Derrick Henry has Houston twice in the playoffs. Maybe that would be a potential route for that team to get Derrick Henry. And then now I have a, a, a spot that I can get a little younger. And then now I'm a rebuilding team. And I have a running back that is, has a little bit more life left in him. And now I go, hmm, how do I take that running back and even get a little bit more young? <laughs> or how can I get a wide receiver out of that? How can I get draft picks out of that? Um, or sometimes you just go straight to dra trading dra Derrick Henry for draft picks. And that's an awesome option too. But those are some of the moves that I want you to start triggering in your brain start thinking about it because it's very important that we start thinking about those processes because playoffs will come soon all of a sudden it's thanksgiving it's it's christmas time and we're getting into championship mode so peace out take care we'll see you again very soon